Okay. <clears throat> so, like I said earlier, we're gonna be using a uh, standard John Deere key switch here, which uses this black connector to go onto there, and then it uses these tabbed crimp-on terminals that click into this. Um, it's not a sealed connector, but it's an easy connector to replace. It's super rugged, lasts a long time until it gets a little corroded. Uh, you can prevent that from happening, uh, but it's just a super reliable key switch, um, and it's my favorite key switch really um, out there. Seems to be the most reliable, longest lasting key switch. So, it's not as fancy as the coal, like, it's not as fancy as the sealed coal Hersey with the Deutsch connector and stuff like that, which this too is a very good key switch as well, but keep it simple, right? So, we're gonna wire this up with some extension leads since we're using this harness that we cut up, and then we'll butt slice that into our extension harness to make it long enough. Like I said, we're just doing this as if we're just harvesting this harness with limited stuff um, making it work we'll go over making a whole harness in the second part here but we'll go ahead and start and so we're gonna need a couple 12 gauge wires um, for our power feed so we're gonna have unfused uh, unswitched fused power to the key switch uh, we're gonna have alternator power we're gonna have ECU wake up we're gonna have starter solenoid and then we're gonna have two auxiliary powers to feed our to feed our diagnostic gauge and to feed our uh, our auto feed control controller tachometer so we'll start out with our red leads so the way you do these, the way I like to do them, they, from the factory they don't come like this, but I like to, I like to heat shrink them on there as well after I crimp them. Sometimes I like to solder them. That's a debate whether or not that's a good practice to do or not, but right now we're not going to solder, we're just going to crimp. So what we need is the appropriate crimpers, uh, W crimpers here. These are the ones, I like the ratcheting ones for this uh, because you can ratchet it down, you can get it centered and locked in and then go ahead and crimp because a lot of times that's the problem when you do these is the the terminal gets shifted in the, in the crimper and then the crimp doesn't come out right. But then we just need a pair of strippers as well. Where did I put those at? Be right back. stripper wire to appropriate length. Now, as you can see on here, there's two different crimp sections. The back side of the crimp is gonna go on the insulation of the wire. The front side of the clip is gonna go on the exposed conductor, the copper. So you line that guy up. Get it set up in the crimper there.
crimp it on the conductor. It makes a nice W style crimp. I like to use the circle side on this back side. Make sure it gets in there and then make sure it stays in this tool correctly or else it'll get all bent and it won't go on there. But yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful crimp there. And then I like to just for a little bit of extra assurance and to try to keep some of the corrosion out of that conductor is I'll just put a little bit of heat shrink. Okay, and then we can snap it into our connector here. So there's a tab here on the other side. That's the side that your wires are gonna be inserted into. So we're gonna call this one. This one's gonna be what's in our circuit's gonna be numbered 022. So 022 is our unswitched fused power. So that one's gonna go onto the very top here. Just insert it correctly. So looking at the face of it, the tab's gonna face down on the connector. Pop her in there, now she's locked in there. We're gonna go ahead and repeat this process for all these wires. Um, our white wire here, this is gonna be our starter, star, our starter solenoid signal. That one's gonna go right here in the middle one. So it'll be right there. We're gonna have um, a red one here for ECU power on. So this is when you go key on, this turns the ECU on. That one's gonna go right here on the side. And then we're also gonna have key on power for alternator excite. It's gonna be a purple wire. That one's gonna go right underneath that. And then we're gonna have two wires on the other side. One's gonna go feed our diagnostic gauge. The other one's gonna feed our auxiliary uh, hydraulic uh, tachometer. So fast forward. We wired up our key switch. We butt spliced and heat shrinked it into our harness. Next step is we need to terminate some of these other wires to be able to connect to our harness adapter for our diagnostic gauge. So like I said, it's got a 12 pin DT12 uh, Deutsch connector. Goes in there and then we have some female six pin doits on the other side um one side's going to be into this connector and then it jumps out so you can we can use the other side of the jumper to provide can bus and power and ground to our to our uh, auto feed tachometer so what we got to do for that is just uh install some deutsch connectors here so what we're going to need is a Deutz uh, DT06 male connector. And then so in the Deutz connectors, the males get female connectors or female terminals within the connector body. So uh, pretty simple. Deutz is the greatest interconnect in the industry. All we do is strip our wires to the appropriate length. So we're gonna do our CAN bus pair here. So 
The reason we reuse this is because inside here there is the 120 ohm resistor that's needed for the CAN bus communication protocol to work. So we strip our wires, get our connector terminal body. You'll need a pair of Deutz crimping pliers. Insert connector and squeeze. Pretty easy. Repeat for the other side of the CAN bus. There we go. Take our connector body, take the wedge lock out of it. And then we'll go over here to CB. So we're going to go green CAN wire here in number three. Yellow can wire here in number two. Insert these wires. Until they click into the connector. Make sure the terminals are locked in the connector. And then we will need to go ahead and do the same thing for our power wire. We'll crimp an end onto this power wire, insert here into number one. We will take a ground wire, go in here to number six, um, and that will complete that connection to our diagnostic gauge. So that'll give us CAN bus communication to our ECU, and that'll give us uh, keyed on power and ground. Uh, and then we have the ability to loop here and then we will use this other side of the connector to supply power to this harness. And what we'll do to make this work is in this application, so we bought this harness from Morbark. We're gonna change out this connector here on this harness to be able to coincide with this connector. Um, and then we'll break out, we'll break out this green and brown wire We'll break out this connector. Um, our green and brown wire is what's gonna end up going to our uh, control solenoids on our uh, hydraulic auto feed valve. So um, green wire is gonna be our forward wire and then brown's gonna be our reversing wire. So we'll change these connectors out go into here but it's going to be the same same type of deal as i demonstrated here the way that we do it's very simple strip the wire to the appropriate length um i like <clears throat> i like these barreled crimps you can get the cheaper deutz connectors that require you to use one of these uh they're stamped so they have the little wings on them but these barrel ones are the best <coughs> pretty hard to pretty hard to mess up there's a little inspection hole here in the terminal to let you know that you stripped the wire the appropriate amount. The depth's preset when you put it into the tool. Just goes in the tool like that. Put your uh, uh, put your conductor in there. Squeeze it. Uh, Four-way crimp. You're good to go. So <clears throat> that will be the next step. We'll go ahead and continue and do that. We'll modify this harness, um, show you the end picture, and then we'll go ahead and we will power this up on the bench just so I can show you how to go ahead and set up the options within this diagnostic gauge um, and then set up the parameters here in this auto feed tech. Okay, so after we terminate those wires here onto the onto our Deutsch connector, all we do is make sure our seal's on there. Then we take the wedge lock, just insert the wedge lock, click it in, that way the wires can't come out again. And then we're gonna have two empty holes here on this one in particular, and then we're just gonna insert our little plugs here and make sure we don't get any water intrusion into that connector. And there we go, that connector is done. That connector is gonna go right here onto this one. 
And then we are gonna modify these two connectors to work with this connector and then it'll work with the rest of the machine. That's the next step. Okay, <clears throat> so to finish up our rough uh, harness build here, our final step is to make our tachometer harness adapt with our diagnostic gauge harness. The way we're going to have to do that is we're going to have to install this DT06 male connector. We're going to have to change out the wires from this DT03 connector with our CAN bus. So again, we have a green and a yellow wire. Those are our two CAN bus wires. And then we have a shield here as well. That's our CAN bus shield wire. Then we're going to have power which is going to be this one with the fuse. We're going to have ground, which is going to be this black wire. This white wire we're not going to use on this application. This white wire is put there to be able to pick up signal from a uh, magnetic pickup off of the flywheel ring gear sensor. Um, this would be if you did not, if you had an engine that did not have uh, ECU that has CAN bus connection. Uh, this is the way that our uh, hydraulic uh, tachometer would be able to pick up uh, pick up RPM signal to be able to tell our hydraulic valves what to do. So um, pretty simple. So with uh, we'll start here with our CAN bus connector, this DT03 to disassemble these connectors. This one we don't have to repin because it's got the right the right terminal so we just pop out our wedge lock that guy then we go inside here and there's little tabs we release you go in there you pick that little tab out and then you remove the connector our terminal do the same thing with the rest of them So we have those already terminated and they are, like I said, if you have a male Deutz connector, it takes female terminals. So what we will do is we'll go ahead and match this up here. So we're going to go green CAN bus wire is going to go into number four here. Yellow is going to go into number three here. And then shield will go into here, into number five. Okay, so there's our CAN bus connection here that we're going to piggyback off of our diagnostic gauge. <clears throat> and then we will need to remove these wires. So this one's a female DT06, so the wedge lock's inside. So use your Deutz tool here. Um, you can make this yourself, it's just a little hook. You go in there, grab the wedge. Grab the wedge, pull it out. And then same deal, there's little locking tabs in there that hold those guys in. We're gonna remove the green wire and we're gonna remove the brown wire these ones are gonna we're gonna switch these connectors out to mate with the machine like I said green is gonna be forward operation for our hydraulics brown is gonna be reverse operation for our hydraulics the fused lead is our power in we'll remove that brown or black it's going to be our ground and then white we're not going to use okay so we don't need any of that stuff anymore and then all we will do is we will trim we will strip
and then we will crimp. New connectors. Onto there. The terminals, my bad, my bad. This one, this white one we won't need. We'll cut that back. We'll heat shrink that wire just to keep it out of the way. Install the terminal here on our ground connector. Bam, line it up here. So we'll have the fused power going into slot number one here on our DTO6, and then we'll have ground going in here to number six. Yeah, so power into one, ground into six. This connector is now assembled. Everything's locked in. Put the wedge lock in clicks and so now that's done and then we will take these two here terminate these we'll re-terminate the other ends of the machine we'll just insert these into another Deutz connector here I'm just using a DTO4 right now because I didn't have a DTO2 available um, there is a big shortage of the DTO2s I do have some I'm just not trying to go get them uh, and then we will put the wedge lock in there um, for this, since we have to use this because this is all we have, we'll plug up the extra cavities because we're not going to have anything going through there. So that's it. This will go to our, auto, our Vickers uh, hydraulic shift valve. We've got this all connected up. This end is going to go to our tachometer. This end goes to our diagnostic gauge. This goes to our key switch. This goes to our throttle switch. And this goes to our harness. So. That is the rough assembly of this harness. So we will go ahead now and bench test it, make sure everything's hooked up correctly, and I'll show you how to program the tachometer and the controller. Uh, and then we will uh, wrap this up, tape it up, loom it up, and uh, put it back onto the machine. But there you go, that's, that's uh, the general rough cut of the harness.